So you've just started a new run in Banners of Ruin. You have your team selected and you're raring to see how far you can make it against House Ender. But then you make it to the card screen and ask, what do these numbers mean? How do I decide what lane to choose? What in the world does that blue marker mean? If you have found yourself asking these questions, then stick around as we take a deeper look into how to navigate the lane system in Banners of Ruin. The lane system may seem intimidating and confusing at first, but once you have a grasp as to how it works, you will be able to make a better informed decision as to what events will help prolong your journey, and what risks to take or avoid. Upon entering a new district, each lane starts with the same number. A good analogy to help understand this system is to envision each lane as a long corridor with various rooms, the rooms representing the types of events behind the cards. Once you complete an event, the lane indication subtracts by 1, and the rest of the lanes not chosen are also subtracted by 1. However, things become more interesting when cards with timers are introduced. Occasionally you may run into event cards that will last for more than one turn. These could be either positive events that provide worthwhile boons, or dangerous events that require you to plan your next move, or in some cases obstruct a lane limiting your options. It is worth noting that cards with timers that are not picked immediately will not reduce the lane number. When more of these cards are introduced, the lane indicator will start to widely vary in value. This is where crossroad cards will start to come into play. The deeper you progress through each lane, the more likely you will come across crossroad cards. Crossroad cards act as points of no return as you explore each lane. In the early stages of a playthrough, you will likely come across them at the same time in each lane. But as new card events are introduced, and lane indicators become more varied, you will start seeing them in a less uniform manner. An important thing to note about crossroad cards is that they will not be discarded until it is selected, or another crossroad card from another lane is selected. This can lead to scenarios where a form of backtracking is possible, allowing you to explore the other lanes in the hopes of finding more loot and boons to aid you if you think you can handle the extra challenges. Once you decide to use a crossroad card, every other card in the adjacent lanes is discarded to match the lane's number indicator. Always remember that the lower the lane's number, the closer you are to encountering the district boss. Regardless of district, each lane offers the same three events when the indicator reaches two. The smithy event for last minute purchases, the tavern for hiring new party members, and the monastery for 100% party healing for a fee of 250 florins. All that leaves is the district boss, and if you succeed, the cycle repeats for the next district. The last thing to discuss about the lane system is the blue marker that appears in subsequent playthroughs. This marker becomes visible to those who have successfully completed the game for the first time and is tied to the end game Informant Quest. The Informant Questline is a series of events that allows the player to unlock the true final boss of Banners of Ruin. This questline requires you to complete one specific event in each district. The blue marker indicates which lane the event will show up in, allowing you to plan ahead to ensure you are ready to complete the tasks. These tasks will become increasingly difficult if you are not prepared sufficiently. The informant questline can be forfeit at any time by selecting the appropriate option presented during its event card, or skipping the event entirely by avoiding cards in the specific lane. Well, that wraps up all there is to know in navigating the lane system within Banners of Ruin. I hope this guide has been a helpful resource for newcomers and veterans alike. If you enjoyed this guide, then feel free to send it to others who you think might benefit from it. Until we meet again, may fortune favor you in your fight against House Ender.